thing is 6 30 p.m. 30 p.m. on June 11th, 2024. I'm going to go the Hadley Conservation Commission meeting. First on the agenda this evening is request for determination of applicability. 89 Hockenham Road continues from last month. Tory Field seeks approval for a shed located in the 35 foot no disturb zone, according to our Hadley Town bylaw. What do you have for an update, Tori? Thank you. Um, hello. Good evening, everyone. I am on the list at, with Amherst Welding to get it to get the trailer fixed. I have an order in with them. Um, I don't know when it's going to happen. You know, they have to order the parts and come do the work. And they said that they're pretty swamped, but I am I'm in the queue. And they said that you all could call them if anyone needs verification of that, or I can have them write something up and send it to you. <clears throat> I don't know. Is it how many people are there tonight? It looks like three. Four, four, four. four. Okay. So just assuming, I know that you said last time that it was not possible to, I, I know there was at least one person who was pretty adamant against approving it as a shed. And maybe that's still the case that there's not enough people who would approve the shed permit. The only, like I said before, I'm not trying to leave it there long-term. I am trying to move it. Um, but the only try reason we're asking for the shed permit is to um, not have the pressure of moving it until we have it fixed and have a place to put it. Well, I'm going to make a recommendation that we continue this hearing till next month. You get further update on your progress removing the shed because we're not going to allow the shed. We cannot allow it in the 35 foot no disturb zone. It's not allowed by bylaw. So, how's the rest of the board feel? Yeah, we can't issue a permit until they no they didn't take it. We're almost going backwards to issue a permit. permit. So we can't issue a permit. No, right? exactly. We're not allowed. So yeah, we'll do another month to see if we can get it moved by then, and just keep us up to date. Check back with us. Okay. So I'll look for a motion to continue this to July 9th, our next meeting for our next update. July 9th. And as long as you're making some progress, we appreciate that. We'll work with you there. Okay. I appreciate that. I know Amherst Welding is very capable of doing that. Jeff's good. Yeah. Jeff Weiss is a very good person to do that for you. Yeah, Jeff and Darren, I've been working with, and they've both been they've both been great. So, okay. So look for a motion to move this to next month. Continued. Make a motion. He yeah. makes a motion. I'll second. Brandon seconds it. Make for a discussion. All in favor? Oh, aye. 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 Unanimous. All four board members present. Okay. All right. Thanks, you all. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. you too. Next on agenda is request for determination of applicability. Five, Joel Terrace. Eric Mayer seeks to construct a deck attached to a single family home. The proposed deck is within the 100 foot buffer zone. And who do we have here to present for this tonight? I'm here, if that's what you're talking about. Okay. Thank you. So you have to present your plans to us, please. So the plans were submitted. Um, there should be copies there for your review. I have completed the WPA one form. We did have Ward Smith come out and do a delineation and verified where the wetlands lie. Um, we are not gonna be within the 35 foot do not disturb zone. Um, all the work will be contained outside of that. The plans so are drawn up. The, the red dots are supports for the deck? Um, yes. So the supports will all be with, with outside of the 35-foot zone. And how are those being installed? They, I believe they're going to be the uh, diamond pier supports. So they go into the ground about a foot. They can be removed. They're not um, something that needs to be dug in four feet, like traditional columns. So basically no disturbance to the ground except for the, where they're going in. Correct. I, I think as we hit that description last meeting. Correct. So it looks like the deck is going to cantilever over into the 35 foot buffer zone, but the, as long as the supports are not in the 35 foot buffer zone, they're, they're allowed to do that. 
You're good with it. Yeah, yeah. It's only in a, it's only a, a small corner. Okay. Yeah. You were just full. And yep. the deck the deck is elevated how high off the ground? Um, at the point where it will be that we're going to be adding on, it'll probably be maybe a couple of feet off the ground. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's the the corner that's near the closest to the thirty five foot buffer. Correct. A couple of feet off the ground. Correct. Okay. You have the dimensions of the deck. Um, which part, the existing or the additional one? The question is, you are getting some shading in that thirty-five foot buffer zone, but it's on the edge. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. No, it's, 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 I'm not saying this. But they said those piers are super uh, undisturbed. They don't. No, but as far as yeah. So the the dimensions of the deck, we're going to be extending eight feet out from the existing, which will cantilever cantilever over. Um, but the supports will remain outside of the 35 foot zone. Um, and then it's going to be extending to the the right as I'm looking out at the deck from the house um, past the existing deck. And it'll go over towards the new addition, which is the garage. Um, all of that is well beyond the 35 foot zone and it won't interfere anywhere other than that one corner. Okay. Okay. Um, board members have any other questions? I'm good with that. Look for a motion to close the hearing. I'll make a motion to close the hearing on five to all tiers. Second. Second. Steve, any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Now we'll discuss the determination. What do you feel, Kayla? Number three? Two is in the buffer zone. Well, three is also buffer zone. Yeah, the buffer zone. yeah, three and six maybe. Uh, yeah, three. Three, six, three. Yeah. Because this, the wetlands are further down than 35 foot stone, correct? Yeah. So they're not in the. It's not in the resources. Yeah, resources. I'm saying a negative three. The work described and requested is within the buffer zone as defined regulations, but will not alter an area subject to jurisdiction on the act. Therefore, said work does not require a final notice of intent, subject to the following conditions, if any. Uh, we're going to need some erosion control. Maybe erosion control of the thirty foot, foot thirty five foot no disturb line. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that because yeah. you know, all their diamond piers are yeah beyond the 35 right. foot. Right. Yeah, so you should be able to do that. Okay. So we'll add that as a condition. Uh, and also, and then we, we do six, Kayla, the area and or work described in the request is not subject to additional review and approval by the Hadley Conservation Commission. Okay. So the, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's six. So I'll look for a motion for those two uh, negative determinations, a three and a six. I'll make a motion. We do the three and the six. Steve makes a motion. I'll second. Ben seconds second. it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Steve? Aye. All four packs approved. It. Okay. Just... The... I will... Just so I understand what... what happened we're all set we just need to abide by a couple of conditions um, for erosion control is that correct yep. yeah yes. in the permit to the map. and i would recommend that when you get that erosion control in place before you do the work just have kayla come out give her a call so she can just inspect it please sure absolutely um and also you got to wait till you get this paperwork in the mail there is a Appeal period, correct, Kayla? Yeah, 10 days. 10 days if somebody wanted to appeal. Okay. I mean, we've got a neighbor that's not happy with you, Mike. The camera turned off. Can you turn the camera back on on the computer? On the, um... I don't know how to do that. I think we're 
25? We're not 25. We're not all good. I think it kind of is. Okay, it's, it's there we go. It even has the narrative here. That in the control should also be shown in the plan as adequate to protect the weapons during construction. This is from the uh, Wendell Wetland Services. Left of the spot. Mm -hmm. Here. Doesn't fall in the open. Doesn't fall within the estimated habitat to where all the species are living on the road. That's Ward Snake. Okay. Beautiful. Are we sending around to get signatures here? I think. Um, the meeting sign is. Are, are you writing down the people from the Zoom? The Zoom? Yeah. Yeah. I'll get I don't know what's wrong with the camera, but it keeps turning. Next on the agenda this evening is a notice of intent 170 297 315 Russian Creek continue from last month. Belief SLS. Seeks to reconstruct the Subaru dealership building and parking area. Work will take place within the riverfront area and 100 foot buffer zone. Who is here? If you guys are talking to me, I can't hear anything from the commission. Test, test. I can hear that. Okay. So we will have to just use the computer. Okay. How's the volume? I can hear everything fine if you guys can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Great. Um, you want to start? I don't know if you where you guys were at. I kind of lost you when you just did the intro. Want to give us a quick overview of what's going on and yeah. Do it. Can I share a screen, Kayla? Is that easy? I can just do it and sorry, what? Can I share the screen? Yeah, you can share a screen. Great. Um, I'll just put up the site plans. Um let me know if you see site plans. Yep. Yep. Great. So I'm Steve Riberty, uh, senior wetland scientist at Goddard Consulting. Um, Chris Cabral, the site engineer, is on remotely with me tonight as well. I don't know if Tom I'm or here, anybody please. else in the team. Oh, you're there. Great. Yeah, I'm here. Um, excellent. So, you know, Tom's here as well. So I'll go over the site real quick. You know, we presented this a couple months ago. We had some comments from DEP, some feedback from you guys. Um, you know, we responded to all that. We had, you know, peer review done by Ty and Bond. Um, engineers went back and forth on that. Um, so the plan, this is the existing Subaru site as it is now. This gray building is the existing Subaru dealership that's there. This is Harbor Freight. This is the building out back that was constructed and, and never really used. So the proposed work is to essentially reuse this site. Almost all the proposed work is in existing paved areas. Um, there's some changes up front. You know, one of the comments that came in from DEP was adding in the wetlands that were across the street and over here on the Chinese Immersion School property. So we've got some buffer zone and some riverfront up in front here. But the the work up here is reduction in, imper, imper, in impervious surface and riverfront up front. Um, the, the real wetland is out back here. It's off site. You know, we're outside the 35 foot buffer zone again. All the paving that's back here is existing pavement. We're working within it. The building is essentially getting shifted closer to the middle of the site, and the upfront area is going to be more parking. Um, there's some riverfront work down here on this 
building that they were going to reuse, but the riverfront work here is just redoing the entrance within the paved sidewalk area to add in another entrance to that building. So there's really no there's no change in in impervious surface or disturbance to riverfront. Um, one of Mark Stinson's comments was, I think, showing a net improvement to riverfront because we are in it. So we're going to propose some a riverfront enhancement zone down here where we can um, just get rid of some invasives, put some native plantings in just to kind of do a little bit of enhancement to make it a little bit better when we're done. Um, like I said, this engineer's on tonight for stormwater. Um, I'll let you guys ask any questions or if he wants to present any any of the discussions that went back and forth with uh, Ty and Bond, the peer reviewer. But that that's the project in a nutshell. Um, I'll turn it back over to you guys for, for questions or feedback or anything on, on where we're at. So, so, uh, I'm getting a weird echo, like there's two different computers on. <laughs> So the <laughs> Wait, I think yeah better a little bit Hello. Hello. I can hear you, but it sounds like you're underwater. Yeah, it's really gaming. Hang on. How's that? That's better. Okay, so we're back to the... So the comment letter that we get from the DEP with a file number, all the issues have been addressed for DEP and Mark Stinson's happy? I believe so. He hasn't, he hasn't provided any additional feedback on what we've, what we've prepared, so... I don't know if you usually he writes the letters and it leaves it to you guys to <laughs> decide what to do with them. But you address all his questions. Yes, yes. Why don't you address them? I'm sure he's read them and uh, he'll let us know if he doesn't like them. And the peer review was done and the peer reviewers agreed with. Yeah, time bonded peer review. Okay. Cabral responded. The, these are all set from before. Yep, they were recorded. I don't think I've sent you evidence of recording, but they're both recorded. So you made improvements. You moved the parking back in the front, uh, less previous area. You've also riverfront area in the right corner done improvements. Uh, um, I have a question about snow storage. Is that shown on the plan, or is it going to be the same area as the original plans? Did you hear that? Yeah. So I don't know. Tom or Chris, more of a question, I guess, for Chris, where the snow storage is going to be. If we can, we can put it. I think it was discussed about where it's going to be, but I don't, I don't know if the notation is on the plan or not. But we can easily add it to the plan or condition if we come into agreement where the snow storage is going to be. Yeah, I did a quick skim of the plans, and I'm not sure if they're in the set that we submit to conservation. But let me just do a quick. That was a that was a wild card question. I was not expecting. To... These are always wild card questions when you do an all here. <laughs> <laughs> to be on your toes. Okay, I'm skim. Uh, I don't believe we showed those, but we can absolutely add that to our. Uh, we often show that on the landscape plan, just because the proposed plantings and trees would be the only conflict outside of the limits of paving. Um, but we could absolutely incorporate that as like a supplemental um, drawing we provide the commission if if it's something that would that could be a, a, a special permit condition. Um, well, you you have a wetlands on the site around the perimeter in the back. We've got a lot of impervious paved area and building. And there's going to be a lot of snow buildup if we get a heavy snowstorm. And I don't see where you're going to put all that snow easily. There was a reference in the in a revised or one of the revisions to the old um, original 2000, I think 11 or 2010 plans that showed snow storage, I believe it's in between the two parcels. So yeah, this I, area here, I, yeah, what you're referring to Kayla, this area down here was the snow storage designated area for Harbor Freight when that was permitted. If you get through where my cursor is. 
kind of on this back side of Harbor Freight. So they were going to use, they were going to use the parking lot as well for snow storage. Uh, they absolutely could use the parking lot for snow storage. Um, but at because I know when Harbor Freight's there, they they didn't need anywhere near that all that parking space. So they could comfortably park the snow on the asphalt, let it melt, yeah. and go into the drainage system. Well, that is, I think that's what you're going to possibly have to do here with the dealership is you're going to have to designate a certain number of parking spots in the winter because you don't have any real grassland areas that aren't wetlands that put the snow to let it melt. Otherwise, trucking it all off site or taking a spot on the site that's paved, stockpiling the snow there during a storm, and then like Northampton does in the center of town, you truck it out afterwards. But we're going to need to have some type of snow maintenance plan, the parking lot cleaning, uh, Operation. Uh, well, we have the operations and maintenance plan. It just didn't include the snow storage. Well, can you do have yeah. that? Yeah. So we have all that. We just need to do something about the snow. I think we could maybe condition it just so that no snow in the buffer zone or the front area. Did we have any conditions about salt as well for that? I mean, I have a draft, of, like draft conditions that I can read out, and it includes okay. snow and the salt. Go ahead. Let me know what you feel. Why don't you read that draft? Okay. Fine. Um, well, there was another question about material storage and where are there designated areas for material storage during construction on site? Chris, you want me to take this? Yeah, sure, if you don't mind. Let me just uh, find it. Uh, so <laughs> if you want to pull a certain plan time, let me know. I can flip to the right Yeah, page. no, I don't. I mean, I think it's just a, more of a conceptual. What's going to happen is um, they're going to close down this entire site. So they're going to look to put a construction fence around the entire site. Their operations are going to occur out of 299 Russell Street. So Barry bought that. He's going to rent it to Jeb. Jeb is he's, he's renting it for a year. That's the old Rockies. And you're mm -hmm. familiar with it, right? Mm -hmm. Just to the south of this. So they're going to be able to close off this entire site. So it's not like they're going to have to shift around the site, construct some and then move people, they're going to be able to close down the, the entire the site. Cars in the way. You'll be parking on it because you store materials on, scrape it up, pull off. The the that's exactly where I'm getting. So what are they actually going to do at Barry's site? What's going to happen there? 299 Russell. Yeah. They're going to operate, at least for the short term, um, the, the dealership out of there. They're going to have like, maybe like four or five like example cars up at the street. They're going to keep the building essentially the same. And then that's where they're going to do their sales. I think they also met might have been there last for the Rockies. week for the, for the Rockies site visit. So I think they met with Tom Quinlan, uh, Spank Metal. I think Scott was there as well. They're going to have a service facility. They're going to have a service facility there in that yeah. building. Yes, mm -hmm. for uh, the short term, they've talked to the plumbing inspector. They're talking about what's going to be required if they have lifts in there, just as far as like oil, water separator, type right. tank, all of that stuff. That would um, be different. Yes, different. And then I expect that at some point to come back before. I don't know what's going to go there long term, but it's something will. And then we'll be back before you to talk about what, I mean, you know that site, right? It's like paved or developed. So I don't know what's going to go there, but once that plan gets I don't know. Fine. The building doesn't have tall ceiling. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Actually, so I've been in there. Barry took me in there. If you go to the back, the back. There's, yeah, there's some like loading bays there. They're actually surprisingly tall. They could probably fit like 15 feet. Are they, are, they, are they still renting a facility over here by uh, the... Um, oh, Esalon? Esalon? That one down there? No, I don't. They were using it for they, service at one time. Steve Lewis, I know, was. I don't know if Belize continued that. I think they're doing service just out of this 315 location. When this one closes down, that's when they'll do the service out of 299. And then once this goes, once this is that's done... That's just to figure out. We're just going to take yeah. this site... Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just for full circle, I mean, what's going to happen there in internal storage, there's plenty of area to do it because of, um, I mean, you can see exactly where the parking will be, where they're, when they're building the building, and then they can take all that material off and then they can go in and actually... Will you address the list of the conditions, the snow? Yeah. Okay, do you want me to read the proposed conditions? Sure, please. Do, do you have any other questions first? I'm other than that, I'm, I'm fine with the site and everything we have set up. You guys are knocking the whole building down, putting a new one up. What's wrong with the old one? Oh, it doesn't meet code. There's yeah, yeah no, there's a there's a lot of issues there. I think 
uh, Tom and Mike were good about not making them do a, a bunch of stuff, but it ha it's got to come down. And I think it's not probably too much inside you spread either, because it was that's, so that's exactly it. It's it not built over time. You got it. it they, addition upon addition, they patchworked it. You got and, it. And sometimes you put out just a start from scratch. And if you look at what these, old. exactly, and you look at what Subaru is going to require, they now require if, like if you go by any dealership, like they want you to be able to pull up, the door opens, you pull in. You cut. You get out of your car. You go into this like the service desk. They have, they a, your they have a standard. They've got a. That's exactly. And I think that was part of the transition from Steve Lewis to Jeb was that they were ready for Jeb to take it to that next level. So that's what you're going to see is just like a modernization of it. He's with the wall at the door. Yep. Okay. So basically, I think we're pretty well set with the hearing itself. Yep. So what we could do is look for a motion to close the hearing. Comments, board, and then we go to the conditions. I think Kay was already present proposed a bunch of conditions. Okay, okay. Few that we can issue. Yep, that's on the plan. Sounds like we need any public. I don't know if any public's going to speak to it. Do you have any public that wants to speak to this before we close? Okay, I'll look for a motion to close the hearing. Second. I make a motion to close the hearing. Okay, Makes motion. Three seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Four of the names. So now we're going to go to the actual order conditions. Okay. So the proposed special conditions include number one, prior to the commencement of any activity on the site other than the placement of erosion control, the applicant shall arrange with the commissioner or its agent um, to conduct a pre construction meeting between the supervisor responsible for work and a member of the conservation commissioner or its agent. Uh, number two, prior to any activity on site, the limit of work shall be clearly marked with erosion and sediment controls, construction fencing, stakes, or flags, according to page C8 of plan dated March 2024, and shall be confirmed by the Conservation Commissioner's agent. Uh, number three, the applicant shall notify the Conservation Commission at least 24 hours prior to the start of activity on the site, and shall provide the name and telephone number of the construction supervisor or environmental compliance monitor responsible for overseeing the project. Number four, all equipment shall be operated, parked, and maintained so as to limit alterations of wetlands and buffer zones to those areas clearly identified on the plan and demarcated in the field by the flagging and construction barriers installed. No equipment is to enter or cross wetland resources at any time unless the location of disturbance is marked on the plan's reference in this order of conditions and flagging. Number five, there shall be no use of road salts on the site given the sensitivity of the area as part of the public water supply aquifer. Uh, number six, applicant shall, oh, well, there's no, I think we should change this to applicant shall submit a snow storage plan. Um, in no case is snow to be stockpiled in the buffer zone, 100 foot buffer zone. And then number seven, the stormwater system shall be maintained as specified in the notice of intent and accompanying operation and maintenance plan as incorporated into these special conditions. An annual maintenance report shall be submitted to the Conservation Commission reporting on the maintenance and operation procedures outlined in the O&M plan, which have been met that year. I just ask one question about that 100-foot sure. buffer. If it's on, a, I'm just thinking conceptually, if it's on a paved surface, but within the 100 feet, and so like it would, if there's snow storage, it would go through the stormwater system that they have, would that be acceptable in a suits? Right, because I'm just, where is that? Another that's from, that's from the back. Where it would be a back lot. Yeah, yeah, so like, let me see what back here, right? So something back here, there's a hundred feet here. So if they, you know, back here, they stored it, but it all drains into the stormwater system that they have. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's within a hundred, it's already disturbed. I, I think that's, it's no different than the snow fell from the sky. Got it. As as long, yeah, as long as long as, long as the grading plans show that you're going through the storm drain. Oh yeah, yeah. If everything, yeah. I think it's curved here. So everything yeah, curved is going to be contained. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. 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 Can and, you change and, that to 35 foot booster? And technically, especially if you're not using any salts, it's going to be pretty clean snow, yeah. other than just dirt. Right. Right. Yeah. The salt is the biggest thing for the aquifer. Correct. Because it's all yeah. all the sediment, everything's going to be going in through storm filters. Okay. So okay. That's, it. that's all I have. That's all you have? That's all I have. Do you have anything to add? I mean, there's already existing you know, notations in the plan for erosion control, how it's done, where it is, examples. So I'm fine with those. So I'll make a motion to accept those orders of commissions, uh, conditions. Second. 
Well, I need you just said you made a motion. I, mean, I can't make a motion. You just yeah. did that. <laughs> I, need to, like, I, need, I need a motion. I make a motion to I accept the uh, order of the uh, conditions as read. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Great. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Uh, what's going on? Yeah, thank you, I'm sure it's going to be uh, a lot of work with the building and fire department. Yeah. It's probably once you have a sprinkler system in that building. We'll do. It is sprinkler, but it's all about, you know, is the ceiling, because the ceiling's open. So if the ceiling's open, then you have to face them up. But if there's a cap on it, then you have to face them down. And dial, and, and now you're yeah. doing gasoline and different and fire load. All of that. So they all walk through. Barry was there. Jeff Casey from Belize was there. And then just, like I said, EPW and fire. Building, we're all that walk through with Barry. So, Barry's like, we'll get it's gonna be hard to build cars. Yeah. I mean, you know, we I imagine they're probably gonna stockpile a bunch of the cars, probably over the uh, Salvation Army, I think, is where. Or, or, uh, or uh, what about oh, yeah. the uh, the Pulse? The Pulse yeah. yeah, I don't think they did that over there because there was some issue with something. Um, I want to say I talked to Bill Dwyer, he said they're not doing it there, they're doing over behind, and I think Jeb was just gonna do it behind the Salvation Army. I think that's what they they've been doing it in that back parking lot, <laughs> Goodwill or whatever. Right, yeah, Goodwill. Right. Goodwill is that what it's called? Maybe you can buy the hand from all. Yeah, well, well was not that? When is that an option? That's any twenty, right? Oh, no. So, Tom, do you want me to send the order conditions to you? Okay, yeah. we'll take care of it. We'll record it, and then we'll get you. I'll get you the evidence that it's a compliant being recorded, and then we'll see if we're Yes. Okay. Right. Thanks, everyone. We'll Absolutely. You. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Well, Kayla's getting a form for us to sign. I'm going to go ahead and start on the next notice of intent 170 298 East Street culvert replacement to have the DPW seeks to replace two deteriorated culverts on East Street over an unnamed intermittent stream. And Scott, you here for that? Yes, uh, I'm going to refer it to our consultant, Comprehensive uh, Environmental. They're here to speak on behalf of the town. Okay, sounds great. Go ahead, please. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, can you guys hear me well? Yep. So I, I'm uh, Kevin Barbera. I'm from CEI, and I'm here joined by Perina Deva. And we're here to talk about uh, two culverts crossing East Street in Hadley um, that are needing to be uh, replaced due to deterioration and also uh, insufficient flow capacity. So I'm not sure if I can share my screen real quick to show you the uh, plan set. Let's see. Can you guys see this on your screen? Yeah. Okay, so this is the existing conditions um, plan set. And as you can see, there's a driveway right, right here at 135 East Street. And this driveway over here is 136 East Street. And both have had a history of overtopping with low flood or uh, low storm events, which is one of the main issues. I'm sorry. Uh, is that 135 East Street? Is that the Nabala property? Is that what? 136 is Nabala's. That's where, that's where yeah, we're 136 is that. Uh, yeah. That, like, uh, yeah, the house is like over here. I know where we are now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, so yeah, the um the existing culvert that's crossing 135's uh driveway is 48 inches by 14 inches, and it's a masonry box that's deteriorating. Uh, and the culvert over here is a corrugated metal pipe, which is only 36 inches in diameter. Uh, and at the moment, like I was saying, the culverts are not aligned to meet up with the upstream and downstream portion of the intermittent stream. So we would like to propose to realign the stream with one straight shot, which will be the proposed culvert, uh, at the same time meeting the Massachusetts River Stream Crossing standards uh, to the maximum extent possible. So we pr propose to do this plan right here. Uh, it's a four-sided box, concrete, uh, nine and a half foot span by six and a half foot rise, uh, 143 feet long, connecting the two upstream and downstream areas. Uh, basically taking out these two pipes and omitting this connection area over here and just having a straight connection 
uh, and a nice, easy flow. And it's better for the flow and also for wildlife passage. Uh, and we have wing walls at each of the corners of the culvert, concrete wing walls that will bear on five foot by two foot thick uh, footings. But the culvert itself is a four sided box, so there will be no need for any footing since it's just uh, going to have its own supports. Uh, and with some hydraulic calculations done and some programs ran, we were able to manage to pass a 10 year storm with close to a foot of freeboard, which is definitely an improvement over the overtopping existing additions as is. And for construction, uh, the road, the whole road will have to be shut down due to existing utility work that needs to be replaced, such as a water main, uh, gas main, electrical, and sewer. So we just thought it would be easier to close both sides of the road since there's so many parallel roads that you can take to just avoid this portion of the street. Uh, but within the culvert itself, I'll show you, um, there's a cross-section view. We're planning to put stream bed material that's two foot thick and have two foot long banks for animal passage and wildlife passage. And at the same time, uh, have enough embedment in the ground to be below ground level so that the frost, uh, four foot frost won't reach it. So this is how it would look like at the upstream and downstream view. And if you cut a section of the roadway in the middle, this is how it looked like. There's nine and a half foot span, two foot bank, and two foot depth of stream material with a gravel base at the bottom for support. And over well, here is the hydraulic. Oh, so sorry, concrete, what's that? It's a concrete box culvert that you put in riverbed material inside? Yes, it's within the uh, culvert itself. Yep. So the the culvert will come in um, sections and will uh, section by section put in the uh, stream bed material to be within uh, the culvert. Yes. Oh, and as you the, can see, the, what's the purpose, what's of, doing the purpose that? of this? Sorry, I can you say that again? What is the purpose of the filling the pipe that you're putting in with mud? Uh, it's one of the Massachusetts uh, crossing standards and one of uh, just DEP standards is to have some type of crossing for animals and wildlife to pass on top of uh, the basically the stream bed. So this is only around two foot thick, uh, like uh, either cobble or um, some type of stone for the water will be probably it will be about two year flood height. Um, consistently, and this will give them a shelf to walk to and from the upstream and downstream without crossing the road. Uh, usually, typically, we, we do culvert replacements, and they're in the box form or a three-sided box form. We embed it with stream bed material to meet the standards for uh, DEP. It's a two-minute mainstream, correct? So why why don't you you just talked about a ten-year storm? We're we're going to be getting yeah. far more greater than 10 year storms in the future. Shouldn't this culvert, box culvert be substantially larger in size, even if you got to put the two feet of dirt on the bottom so it doesn't overtop in the event of a, a 50 or 25 year storm? Yeah, so the 20, the 10 year storm was just uh, for the roadway classification, the minimum, but I'm not sure if you can see the screen uh, for the 100 year storm, it still passes, but there will be no freeboard. So the 100-year flood was 125 feet, and the 25-year flood was 124.5, but the top of the cord is 125 feet. So the, the culvert will still withstand the 100-year flood, but just for the minimum passage for the classification of the roadway, the 10-year flood was what was necessary, but it does pass the 100-year flood as well. Okay. Yeah. So it, nine and a half me. feet span. Sorry, go for Priya. So, sorry, yeah, if I may. Um, so the the hundred year the culvert passes the hundred year flood, um, but doesn't have any freeboard to the top uh, cord. However, um, you can see that from the roadway, um, it still provides a two foot freeboard. Uh, obviously, we we get comments back from 
DEP with the file number? Yeah. And have all those comments been addressed? Uh, yes, to the best that we could. Um, there are only, I think, a few comments, and one of which is just to have something in the order conditions for a pre-construction meeting uh, with a contractor to do with the dewatering plan. Yeah. Uh, I was going to get to that soon, but... Yep. So, um, like I was saying before, the four-sided box was the uh, culvert that we chose for design because of the two-foot embedment was uh, necessary for DEP's wildlife passage. And regarding regulated areas, uh, we're not within any 100-year flood zone for FEMA, so there was no need for compensatory storage. And... There is no area of critical concern, uh, ordinary resource or outstanding resource waters, or any natural uh, heritage and endangered species program areas. So for permitting standards, it was uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, for resource areas, the our wetland scientist mapped out the wetlands in the south region over here downstream and also a pocket upstream. But these two areas we're not going to touch and they're outside of our limits of work. The only areas that we're going to touch that are resource areas are the linear bank. And that's just due to regrading the surrounding area as well as filling this void that is uh, currently a big dish in the grass for the connection of the two culverts in a similar upstream we're just regrading the upstream uh, to match the contours that we have for proposed condition. And we also propose a uh, sort of natural stream bank buffer uh, plantings to just to help uh, with infiltration and have like a second line of defense before entering the stream from the farm and from uh, any type of runoff from the upgradient area. We mapped out the 35 foot no disturb zone as well. And due to the uh, nature of this culvert job, we would have to do some type of work within the 35 foot no disturb zone just because of the culvert is in wetland area. Uh, so we're asking for a variance um, from the commission on that regard. But any uh, the other bylaws from the chapter 260 I, we met to uh, the best possible uh, standards. So, so the only inland bank resource areas that we really had to uh, think about were the permanent impacts to this area, since it's going to be filled with uh, whatever surrounding excavation we have. But that was necessary to make this realignment one line rather than having the two connecting points. So uh, anyone and so any work you're going to do in the 35 no disturb zone, you're going to return it back to the prior, prior Correct. commission. Yes, we. It's just, so it's just short yeah. term to get the work done. Just for construction, so six to eight weeks or so. Uh, okay, however long, I think like six to eight weeks. So one thing. And, uh, go ahead. Oh, so you can go. The uh, contractor is usually the one that provides a specific dewatering plan for the proposed work prior to the start of work. The commission should require that an on-site meeting be held prior to any dewatering. The commission should review and approve any dewatering plan prior to its implementation. Guidance on dewatering will be provided. So either you can provide that to us now, or we're going to put that as a condition in the order conditions. Yeah, uh, we have a... Uh, a water dewatering plan and as of now if we could just pre pre present it to you and if for any reason the contractor comes back with something that they want to do we would have to do that meeting as well but i can certainly show you this one uh so it's pretty simple just heavy bags acting as coffer dams at the upstream and downstream area and since this is a low uh flow intermittent stream almost kind of like an irrigation ditch there's not a lot of flow to begin with, but whatever flow there is can be uh, absorbed by this uh, deep sump pump that we can put into place that will uh, discharge into a sedimentation basin that will be filled with soap bags. 
to aid in having the work being done in the dry for the contractor. Uh, and any type of uh, flow that's coming from behind the coffer dam can go into a hose and be put into a silt bag and discharged downstream as well. So just for the six to eight, or not even six to eight weeks, whenever they do the actual culvert um, construction, not the repaving or the regrading work, but maybe a one to two week process, this can be done and hopefully picked uh, the weather to be non, not too much rain or hopefully dry weather. So mm -hmm. uh, it's already slow flow and it's intermittent. So the likelihood of there being too much flow is uh, very unlikely. But this was the one we put into our plans. If you chose to use it, it uh, it the contractor can also take a look and if they like it, we can definitely use it. Um, I think that's what DEP was trying to get at. If they some contractors are kind of picky about what they do, so uh, it's up to you guys what you prefer. I think part of it's going to have to do with what kind of spring and summer we have right now. Uh, last summer was pretty wet, mm -hmm. and if we go from El Nino to La Nina, they're talking a, a large number of named storms, which could also be heavy rain events, and obviously you want to do this during a dry time of the season, but we may not have too mm -hmm. dry su summer this year. I don't know how it's going to work out. So, Kayla, how, how do you want to handle this dewatering? I'm just going to, maybe we could put a condition in saying and before any dewatering happens, submit an updated plan for review by the Conservation Commission. And then maybe just get an input from Mark Stinson if we have to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can put that as an order, order conditions. That basically we're going to wait, wait till you get ready to do the work, come up with a dewatering plan that you want to use at that time, considering looking at what kind of weather we're already having, when you're going to start it, and then we can run it by DEP to make sure they're happy with it. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Uh, I believe uh, that's all we had to present for this culvert, and I think the comments from Mark Stinson were just that one, and uh, him saying that the culvert should be embedded 25% with substrate, which was the two foot of stream bed material that we put within the culvert. Okay, I'm going to look for a motion to close the hearing. I just want to ask them, what okay. kind of wildlife is they predicting to go underneath that culvert? Uh, at the moment, I'm not too sure in that area what would be going through, but I've seen uh, just like uh, squirrels and smaller animals as well. Uh, it's not large enough for like a deer or something to go under, but um. I would say medium-sized animals and like reptiles and whatnot, just for providing shade for them as well in the hot summer. They can just have a, a bank to to sleep on or to just to stay and stay cool. I've seen that in the past. But it's in this area of happy, I'm not sure what kind of animals. Like, it's it's the thing that the state's requiring, so we can't. Mm -hmm. Oh, geez. We don't, we don't all look the state work. So mm -hmm. I'm looking look close to closing here. No good. Close I'll make a motion to close the hearing on uh, the street culvert. Close the hearing. Thank you. Ready? Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Steve? Aye. 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 So I'm going to have Kayla read the draft positions that we will vote on. Go ahead, please. Okay. Number one, any significant changes in plans requires the applicant to come back to the Conservation Commission for approval first, unless it's an emergency situation. Two, the applicant shall supply the contractor's contact information to the Conservation Commission via email prior to the start of construction. Three, um, DPW staff and contractors shall, shall schedule a pre-construction on-site meeting during which time the erosion and sediment controls will be inspected. Four, prior to on-site construction, um, applicant or contractors shall submit the, to the Conservation Commission an updated dewatering plan for their approval before the start. Of work, the plan shall comply with DP Western Region's dewatering guidance document. Five, the work shall be done during low flow conditions. And then six, replication areas shall be as shown on the plan, and any area disturbed by the work shall be stabilized and restored with a New England seed mix. Applicant or their agent shall monitor the, the disturbed and replication areas for two full growing seasons for sufficient growth to stabilize the site, which will mean at least 75% revegetation. Okay. Anything else that any board member would like to add? I'll look for a motion to accept those conditions. I'll make a motion to accept the conditions as read. Brandon makes a motion. Second. Second. Ray. 
Any further discussion? No, in favor? Aye. 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 All four was agreed. Okay. We've got a great cap of this together. That's Okay, so do you want me to, to send the order of conditions to you, Kevin, or Scott, do you want me to send it to you? Uh, if you can send it to me or Scott, either one. I prefer you to send it to Kevin, Kayla. He's uh, representing the project. He's okay. going he's gonna to have to record him anyway, so registry deeds. Okay. Perfect. Sounds good. Next Thank you, guys. Public any public comment? Thank you. Out there. Seeing none. Discussion items: other business, Hockenham Road land. Have a good night, guys. Thank, Thank you. You too. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. Um, we've already started talking about the article meeting, but um, yeah. So this is um, a piece of land on Hockenham Road by the river that somebody is donating to the town. Um, and the idea is for it to be under the, let's see, under the care, custody, and control of the Conservation Commission, but like owned by the select board. Um, it's surrounded by state land. It's pretty much underwater from what I hear. And the select board has to vote on it. Conservation Commission has to vote on it. Blackboard has not voted on it yet. They're waiting for the Conservation Commission to accept the donation. You know, I talked to the uh, tax collector and Danny and suggested otherwise going through the process in the fall is going to cost the town more money to take it because of that taxes. Right. He just want to donate it. This is the quickest, easiest way. Mm -hmm. And uh, Danny said it has value that we could possibly use, maybe use as a negotiating tool to state for some other project. They want the piece to mm -hmm. add to their surrounding pieces. There's no liability on our part. I think it's a a win-win situation. Somewhere down off of what we're uh okay. on road, Fort River. Who owns it? Sadowski. So it's Chet Sadowski. Yeah. Which pieces I'm trying to think of right there. Who is it by Mitch's Marina? So it's a landlocked piece of land. It doesn't extend to the river or anything, does so it? So if you're past the bridge here, the burn bridge, and then so it's going up towards your land. Right. Yeah. Which, yep. Is that really very, very accessible? You can get accessible from the road, right? This is Mitch's way. Well, the end of Mitch's way is down here somewhere. And this is that private road that goes up that gate here somewhere. It does about the river. Yeah. So it's right there in that corner. Above hand it's just is this Hannigan's right here. What's that sir? Yeah, Edward Hannigan. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's right there in the corner. I thought it's a bunch of new people swimming. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it does have direct funds in kind of the river. Right. This is a little deep. Oh yeah. All right, Carl, John, Carl Johnson's, yep. Yeah. Sweet. You know what? Oh, that worked there. I don't think so. No. We had had a downtown riverfront campsite for us. All the women were gone, boy. Here's the motion. <laughs> so, I'm going to look for a motion to. Uh, I hereby move that the Constitution Commission accept the donation of land by the record owners of land known as Ford Meadow Parcel ID 003 0017 dash quad quad double quad all. As authorized by the select board and pursuant to GLC 40 section 8C to be held under the care, custody, control of the Conservation Commission, the land is described in a deed recorded in the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds in Book 14834, page 155, said land contains approximately 5.35 acres. So, um, I basically, I'm not, I make the motion, even while we're here. I can look for a motion for this. 
Awesome. What would the motion be? Just to accept it? That the motion, yeah. I, yeah, I make it a mo I make a motion. They would make accept. a motion to accept, and the second would be yeah. Brandon. Sure. Any further discussion? No. no All in favor? Aye. 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 And we'll have the four board members sign. Yeah, uh, there's two. Four. You have to sign both. One is just the motion, and one is the acceptance of the. It's part of the deed. Okay, so. Okay. An acre. So five bucks. <laughs> I'll let you figure out the motion. Yeah. Yeah. He's the duck hunter. Right? There's a little pond that keep trucking around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sound like a. Now they want signature. They want to print the name here on this one. And signatures. Maybe both. I'll I'll sign and print out. Yeah. Well, okay. below, I'll, I'll, below it, I'll do that. You can't always read signatures. I'll leave the dates open for you. So here we go. Okay. Five acres from the riverfront, cottage, and access to the road. We have to take a ride down here and check it out ourselves. Yeah, okay. Pretty heavy. Heavy woods. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't know it if you went by it. It's, right. It's all the same. Right. But it could be a good negotiator to escape when we need something we want to add to their contiguous parcels on both sides. Mm -hmm. What else are we going to do with it? It's a road, and that's where all the trees fall over. Mm -hmm. You know, know. Next step after that will be drain any this maintenance and full question. Yes. So um Smith Smith from the APR program reached out to me a, a little while back about organizing an information session on drainage ditch maintenance and regulations that apply programs that are available. Um so that is gonna be happening in this room on June twenty sixth, which is a Wednesday at six PM. So it's going to be um, Mark Stinson from DEP is going to be there. He's going to give a presentation on wetlands regulations and how they apply to agricultural ditches and ditch maintenance. Is that a Wednesday? It's a Wednesday. Wednesday. I'm going to, uh, somebody's creating a flyer for it, which I will oh, show you. Know, yeah, I think that's something, that's some, I think that's something you should attend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Answer some be, questions. DEP representative is going to be there, APR representative, um, someone from the Ham Hampton, Hampshire Conservation District, and NRCF. Um, local farmers, should they get notified? Yeah, I'm going to be sending it to, actually, I'll send it to you guys. You circulate it to whoever you think will be interested. I'll try to get it posted in different places yeah. around town. Um, let me know where you think I should post it. Where you think? If you can just give me the flyer, whatever email it to me, I can hand it out to 20 right. people that want to go to this, right. sure. So. Yeah, so I'm hoping to do that later this week. I still don't have the final flyers. Yeah, we're going to pull in a sugar shack and pull in a Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that'll be that'll be good. And Hadley Media is going to be there to record it. And hopefully we'll have like a Zoom option too. If people don't want to show up, they can log into Zoom and watch something online. Um, yeah. And sure. that's it for all that. Reappointments. So Ray and Steve are up for reappointment. Um, you just have to fill out this form if you want to be reappointed. And then, um. Ray, do you still want to be the CPA representative? Oh, I would love to be the CPA representative. Perfect. We need you to ask why. Um, I mean, before the end of the month. But if you want to just do it now, it's also fine. Do I do it home, bring it back? So. Yeah, we could also email it. it. And oh, bills. <laughs> yes, and bills. I don't and have a. any bills. <laughs> and do we have any minutes you want to? Yes, we were from the way you do. So, 
We are getting to the point where we need to address titles. We don't have a vice chair. A what? A what chair? We only had a vice chair in the past. And if anybody else would like to be chair, are we going to step on the vice chair and somebody else would like to? If not, I'm probably stuck with it. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> But we should have a, a, a vice chair if anything. Somebody, somebody else would want to be chair. And I'm, I'm willing to pass the torch, but um, we should have a vice chair that can run the meeting if I can't make one for some time. I'd be fine with doing that. If everyone else is okay with that. Yep. Mm -hmm. you see how it is. Rules of Robert's order and it's just it's pretty yeah. That anxiety. Um, so uh, we can either do it this meeting or we can wait. To, I, I don't think we we'll have a problem with Gordon unless he wants it. No, he won't. Doesn't want it. <laughs> well, he is with you both here. I'm sure he will. <laughs> so you you got a lot of good background. You can go and stuff. So. Yeah. Um. I would make a motion to uh, nominate Brandon Daniels as the vice chairman for the board. Second. Any further discussion? All the favor? Aye. Uh, we get three. That's all we need. So you're, you're not going to have to tell the vice chairman. Perfect. That way, if I'm not available, yep. I'll get Jody to step in. That's funny. And uh, also run meeting. Excellent. We have to make a motion to accept these minutes. Yes, uh, we'll need a motion to accept the minutes if uh, somebody wants to make a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from the May 14th meeting. Second, we have. Second. Uh, for discussion. Hearing mm -hmm. none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, let's approve the May minutes. I think Kaylee is doing a fantastic job. Especially putting together an order with the business like that. But that's a while out of time. Mm -hmm. Some of the things. Yeah, they're putting your titles but, but you, take them from other you, You're doing a great job of pulling that together. Or, no. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Awesome job. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I think it's a lot easier than it is. Mm -hmm. I look for a motion to adjourn. Here, yeah. here. A motion to adjourn. Grace, a motion to adjourn. Oh, you have to say it. We don't have to have any further discussion. Aye. 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 Aye.